morning children today's topic is the age of guptas in this chapter we will study about the sources to reconstruct the history of the guptas and their contribution in different fields but before we start with the topic i would like to explain the political history of the guptas very briefly the rise of guptas to power was an event of great significance The Guptas established their empire in whole of northern India. The founder of the Gupta dynasty was Sri Gupta, but much is not known about Sri Gupta and his son. Chandragupta I was the most important ruler to raise the power and prestige of the Guptas. He assumed the title of Maharaja Adiraj. Samudra Gupta was one of the able, ablest of the Gupta rulers. He is called the Napoleon of India. Chandragupta II, popularly known as Vikramaditya, and was given the title of Sakari after he defeated the Sakas. His reign marks the zenith of the Gupta dynasty. Kumaragupta maintained the integrity of the empire. Hans, a tribe of nomad from Central Asia, invaded Northwest again and again. Although Sikand Gupta son of Kumar Gupta defeated the enemy called Huns but the process of the breakup of the mighty empire had set in and the last ruler Vishnu Gupta died in 550 AD thus the mighty empire declined the mighty gupta rulers not only established political unity and economic prosperity but also led to unprecedented growth and progress in the fields of literature art education culture and science and thus the gupta era came to be known as the golden age of indian culture now children let's see the sources to reconstruct the age of guptas the literary sources include the accounts of fasyan and the archaeological sources include alabad pillar inscription literary sources the literary accounts of fasyan fasyan was a chinese pilgrim who visited india during the reign of chandragupta ii in search of buddhist texts he traveled india for more than 13 years and on his return to china he compiled his travel accounts in a book called fokoviki He was in his book he mentions about the city of Patliputra which had two grand monasteries one of Hinyan and the other of Mahayana He was very amazed to see the grandeur of Ashoka's palace He was deeply impressed with the wealth and prosperity of the capital city and the excellent hospitals run by the wealthy citizens of the town Although the king was a devotee of Vaishnav but there was a cordial relations between the followers of various sects the people were honest and law abiding and they could go wherever they desired to go the criminal law was mild and the punishment of death remained unknown Fasyan's account not only help us to reconstruct the history of Buddhism but they also help us to know about the social religious and economic conditions that prevailed in the early years of 5th century AD the archaeological sources alabad pillar inscription the alabad pillar inscription was composed by the court poet hari sena of samudra gupta in sanskrit the inscription gives us a detailed account of the conquest and personality of the king samudra gupta the inscription shows the conquest of samudra gupta is divided into several categories he defeated the rulers of aryavarta that is northern india then he defeated the kings of south but he did not annex their kingdom many other forest tribes rulers of frontiers and eastern regions submitted to the emperor and agreed to pay a tribute to the gupta empire 
After the inscription also tells us, Samudragupta performed Ashwamedha Yajna and issued gold coins depicting the sacrificial horse. The inscription also tells us about Samudragupta, a great musician. This has been confirmed from the coin which shows him playing the veena or the lute. Contribution of Guptas to Education Nalanda University Nalanda University was the most famous of the educational institutions of ancient India. Kumar Gupta founded the university in Nalanda near Rajgrih in Bihar in 5th century AD. Admission to the university was restricted by a difficult entrance examination. The students were provided with free boarding and lodging. Sanskrit was used as a medium of instructions. The important subjects included in the curriculum were the Buddhist and Brahminical literature, logic, grammar, medicine, astronomy, philosophy, tantra and art. The university was so famous that it attracted students from all over India and from neighboring countries. Yun Zhang, a Chinese pilgrim, also studied here. In the 12th century AD, it was destroyed by Muhammad bin Bakhtiyar Khilji, one of the generals of Muhammad Ghori. Contribution of Guptas to Science Aryabhatta Aryabhatta was a great astronomer and mathematician. He wrote two famous books called Aryabhattai and Surya Siddhant. Aryabhattai deals with arithmetic, geometry, algebra and trigonometry. He worked out the exact value of pi and discovered the formula to find the area of a triangle. He throws light on the place value of the numbers 1 to 9 and use of 0. In his famous work Surya Siddhanta, he had explained the causes of the solar and lunar eclipse. He was the first Indian astronomer to declare that the earth is spherical in shape and proved that it revolves around the sun and rotates on its axis. To mark honor to the astronomer, the India's first satellite was named after him. Contribution of Guptas to Culture Works of Kalidas Kalidas was the greatest literary genius of the Gupta period. He is also known as the Shakespeare of India. His literary works are a valuable gems of Sanskrit literature because of the vivid portrayal of character, refined language and appreciation of the beauty of nature. His outstanding contributions are The best literary production is Abhigyan Shakuntalam, popularly known as Shakuntala. His excellent dramas are Malvikya Agnimitra and Vikrama Vomisya. His two epics are Raghuvamsa and Kumar Sambhava. The two lyric poet, poetry are Ritu Samhara and Meghdut. For better understanding, the Deogar temple is explained in pictorial form. The Vishnu temple at Deogar, Uttar Pradesh was constructed in the 6th century AD. The temple marked a transition from the early flat-roofed temples to the later style of a shikara or a tower. It stands on a wide platform approached by flight of steps on the four sides. The platform is decorated with sculptures showing the scenes from the life and actions of Lord Rama and Krishna. The inner chamber 
or the Garbhagriha was surrounded by the four porticos. The temple is dedicated to Lord Vishnu and is also known as the Dashvatra temple. Children, today we have studied about the age of the Guptas in which we did the brief history of the Gupta dynasty, sources to reconstruct the age of Guptas, literary accounts of Fazian and Allahabad pillar inscription, the contribution of the Guptas in the field of education where we read about Nalanda University, science, contribution of Aryabhatta, culture, we read about the writings of Kalidas and studied about the Dyogar temple. Thank you and stay blessed.